Thank you so much, Mark. Um, I'd now like to invite Karen James, who's an instructor in the German and Slavic Studies Department, to tell us about what they do there. Mute. You just have to unmute. Sorry. <laughs> thank you, Heidi. And um, yeah, thank you uh, also to Amber for organizing all of this. And uh, welcome to everybody who's, at, who's joining us today. So hello and guten Tag. Um, you, um, thank you. You have uh, heard a lot about, um, about the different options that we, uh, that we have throughout the various programs within the Faculty of Arts. And understanding between nations is now more important than ever. I'm sure you would agree. Um, you've heard about uh, the, the variety of uh, these fascinating programs and courses uh, where you can learn very, very important knowledge. Um, and now I want to interest you in, um, in European languages and culture. And um, I would like to walk you first through the degree programs that we do offer. Um, we are the Department of German and Slavic Studies, so that's uh, not a combination that you find in a lot of universities across Canada or the US uh, for that matter. Um, but uh, we do, um, contrary to popular belief, work very well together. And um, we uh, offer various degree programs, um, as you can see a minor in all of our different programs, German, Russian, Ukrainian, Polish, Central and East European Studies and Ukrainian Canadian Heritage Studies. And in most of our um, programs, we also offer a general major. Um, for the um, foreseeable future, we will add um, uh, expected in the fall 2021, uh, we expect to add the advanced major co-op and an honors co-op in um, uh, Central and East European study, uh, studies and uh, German respectively. So a minor, what does that mean? A minor basically in our department means 18 credit hours of any course. And uh, that could also mean that if you're taking, uh, if, you, if you're uh, interested in studying German, Russian, Ukrainian, Polish, um, and not want to ever learn the language, you can actually do that. You didn't hear that from me. But anyways, you could actually do that and um, get, a, uh, get the minor by taking culture or literature classes that are offered in English. Um, I will speak a little bit more about that uh, in a bit. Um, but uh, another thing that I wanted to uh, just point your um, uh, 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 point you at is uh, the fact that um, if you want to just uh, take a, dip your toes into all the different kinds of programs and uh, and take some courses in German, but also in Russian or, or Ukrainian or Polish, you could combine those courses and uh, and take um, a minor in uh, Central and East European Studies or take it on to a major, which would be 30 credit hours. Next slide, please. Um, our courses uh, follow the, uh, our language courses, they follow the Common European Framework of Reference for Language Learning and Teaching. Now that's a big long title. It basically is an internationally recognized and uh, used framework that uh, guides learners as well as instructors through all levels of language learning and teaching, of course. Um, our co courses all of them offer a beginner level, which would be the equivalent for that uh, framework as a, an A1 level, um, up to about B1, B2, which is upper intermediate. But some of our courses can go beyond that. And um, we have, uh, uh, we offer courses such as uh, translation courses, business, business language courses, and um, all of those kinds of uh, courses would uh, by default be interdisciplinary. And um, our German section is also an accredited Goethe Institute Examination Center where you can take an official language exam and receive an internationally valid language proficiency certificate. Um, again, that is something that you can take to any employer and uh, if they've ever had anything to do with uh, German, they would know what that is and uh, would be able to um, look at this and say, very employable person. And um, we, um, we also, I also wanted to mention that um, I know you, you're just getting started, but if you already know you want to take your degree very, very far, then you can definitely um, 
plan early because a lot of advanced degrees, a lot of PhD programs might, uh, might require a language um, requirement and uh, for those programs. And you could definitely plan early and get started in your undergrad program. Um, Another thing that I wanted to highlight is that uh, you don't have to be afraid of not mastering a new language. There's this common misconception out there that uh, to learn a new language, you will have to be able to um, speak it perfectly, be, um, be able to understand anything, and that is just simply not true. Partial competences in any foreign language, and I'm not just speaking for German because I teach it, but for all, all foreign languages, including uh, the, uh, the native languages, you uh, want to uh, Want to, I, I want you to know and uh, take away from this that partial competences are definite, a definite plus in any job that you might be doing down the road. Um, knowledge in languages, culture and literature are invaluable and, uh, and applicable to just, uh, just about any profession. Um, Again, the concept of interdisciplinary uh, studies comes into play because in a language class, you end up having a lot of different uh, backgrounds of students and a lot of different interests. They all come together in there and you will be learning so much more than, um, than the language, which is a big part uh, in itself, but, uh, but, but, but just uh, communicating with your fellow students, um, you would be very surprised of the, the fringe benefits of learning a language in that setting. Um, in terms of um, cultures, again, keep in mind uh, uh, culture and literature classes that are offered in English, you could, uh, you are likely looking at a, um, a component that fulfills the writing requirement that uh, the Faculty of Arts would have. And uh, so if you take a culture or literature course in um, in any of our languages, uh, you can fulfill the writing requirement. You basically multitask by uh, putting that maybe towards a major or minor, and uh, you might also fulfill your humanities requirement. So all very big pluses for you. The new co-op program that we're going to be adding um, is also adding to the variety of the choices that you have. Uh, slide four, please. Um, Here's basically a small sampling of, uh, it's a very small sampling of the courses that we do offer. So there are the classics such as Tolstoy's War and Peace, uh, Love, Heroes and Patriotism in Contemporary Poland. Um, you can explore Russia through film. And then we've added some brand new courses. Um, one uh, is called the depiction of the indigenous in uh, German uh, children's literature. Uh, another one is exploring the uh, ecology and environment in German culture and English translation, and it's called My Friend the Tree. Um, uh, we're also looking at spies and stories of secret agents, trees, and, and surveillance. So those are a few of our brand new courses, uh, along with the classics. Um, we have, of course, travel courses, which unfortunately, of course, currently are on hold, um, but uh, they have been very popular and uh, our exchange programs, uh, the same, uh, the same uh, uh, concept there. You see a picture of one of our students who's, uh, who's been on exchange. Uh, he has uh, worked as our TA and uh, been just a general uh, great ambassador for both our programs, as well as one of the, um, the, one of the programs that uh, offers a lot of sponsorship for, for students going abroad. That's called the DAAD, so the German Academic Exchange uh, um, uh, Program. And uh, we do also offer um, financial support uh, through inter internal and government uh, scholarships. The internal ones usually come from our partner universities. Um, there are research grants available and internships um, once you get to that level uh, of uh, studies. You can't do that in your first or second year, but uh, definitely later on. Um, another uh, component that is um, highly recommendable would be, again, the student groups um, becoming involved in that. And uh, in this, within the student groups, you would also uh, be able to um, collect um, recognition for the so-called CCR, which is the, um, the co-curricular record. Uh, again, a very valuable piece of, of um, um, paper, basically, down the road, but, uh, but confirming that your involvement goes beyond the classroom and is um, is again something that employers love to see. 
Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, so sample jobs. Um, as I said, um, really any job benefits from knowledge of a foreign language and culture. And uh, there are some, some specialized jobs that you see listed here. Um, this, uh, the picture of the person you see here, again, is not, not a random person, but one of our graduates. And uh, he is in, uh, in our, um, he's, he's taking law right now. And uh, interesting fact as well, so, uh, some of our students um, have definitely done very, very well as, as lawyers down, uh, like past, past their um, undergrad degrees and, and uh, taking law then. But with that, with the background of, a, of an additional language, I just heard back from a student of ours um, who um, wanted to just reach out again and say um, uh, how much the German language that he learned with us uh, has uh, benefited him. He has been uh, one of our poster kids, basically, because he's uh, gone on exchange. He's been um, he's been involved in all sorts of different uh, areas, including the student clubs and has now just uh, landed a job to, straight out of law school um, with, a, with a company that, uh, that definitely highlighted that, uh, that his German knowledge is, was, a, was a, um, a benefit to, uh, to his application. So um, I wanted to just uh, leave you with that little bit of information and thank you so much for your interest.